So guys, the first thing you want to do is reduce animations, right? Now, if you look at the way these apps open up, they take a while because there is some animation effect that's happening. If you completely remove that, it's going to be a lot faster. So go into advanced features and turn on reduce animations, which is going to be off by default. And after that, now you can see the effect. It's just so much faster. It just happens, you know, at a touch of your fingertip. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you open your Galaxy S10 for the first time or the S10 Plus, you see these really big icons that's taking up a lot of space on your phone. Come on, guys, you've got this large screen. You want to be able to do more with it, right? So long press on the home screen and then go into home screen settings, change the home screen grid to the largest size possible. Now the grid size becomes much bigger and icons become smaller. Now you could just bring out more apps um, and icons on the home screen and you get much more access, readily accessible apps on your home screen real quick. So I highly suggest you do that. And also while you're at it, go into your display settings, go into font style and size and you know keep it on the lower side. And do the same thing for screen zoom, keep it on the lower side. Now you just have more stuff contained within the same screen. So your screen size looks bigger than, you know, when you got it. And here's a really useful thing. A lot of times I'm on some app and I start getting a phone call and it takes up the entire screen, completely blocking my user experience. But you can have your call appear like this in a pop-up and you could answer your call, decline your call, or, you know, add a reminder, or you could send a message all without disrupting your experience. To do that, go into your phone and then go into settings. And there's gonna be an option which is called show calls in pop-up. It would be turned off by default. You're gonna to have to turn that back on. Okay, coming to the next one, Samsung now allows you to configure the Bixby button. So I've configured it to launch the camera app the first time I tap it. And, and if I double tap it, it opens up Bixby Home. And it's really easy to set up. Just go inside Bixby Home and uh, if you go inside menu on the top right corner, go inside settings, there's something like Bixby key over there. And then, yeah, just, just select double press to open Bixby and use single press to open a particular app. And the beauty of this is you could select any app from the list and that's that. I'm a big fan of navigation gestures. You know, you could just swipe from the right bottom to go back, swipe from center to go home and swipe from bottom left corner to access all your recent apps. It's the fastest way to navigate and really quick. Now you're used to this button navigation, which is what comes by default when you open your Galaxy S10. But go into display settings, scroll down to navigation bar and switch over to full screen gestures. And now you just have to swipe. Trust me, it's a lot easier to reach. It might take you a little time to get used to it, but once you do, you would never be able to switch back to navigation button. Next one is a quick tip on accessing notifications from the app icon. So you could long press the app icon which has a notification indicated by a number inside a bubble and you could read the notifications right there. You can dismiss it from here or you could tap on it to read it even more. Now to enable this, you gotta go into your notification settings and then click on app icon badges and right at the bottom is show notifications. Turn that on because that's going to be off by default. Coming to the next one, the one action I do the most is pull down the notification panel to check for notifications. I do that a dozen times a day. But the S10 or the S10 Plus, when they come, you know, by default, the action is to open the app drawer, which is sort of redundant, you know, swiping up does the same. Go into your home screen settings and then enable quick open notification panel and you'd be all set. The next one has to do with edge lighting, which is turned off by default for some reason, but it looks gorgeous, especially on this curved screen that the Galaxy S line series has. Now, you know, you could see that I could interact with it. You know, I could just pull down and I could open it up in a pop-up and, you know, reply to my friend right here. And to turn all of this on, just go into display, scroll down to edge screen, and then go to edge lighting. Now over here, you're gonna see that I can also dismiss the notification by just swiping to the right or to the left. So that's another thing. Anyway, go into edge lighting styles and go into effects. There are a bunch of these available. Uh, there's some new ones. I think, you know, the, these two are new. I really like this one though, the bubble one. You could set a color of your choice, but what I really like to do is set up a custom color. So each app can have its own unique color. So, you know, when I get a notification from WhatsApp, it's going to be green. Now it's only for certain apps. So you could go into manage notifications or manage apps, and then you could have edge lighting 
just work for these apps and then you can set a custom color for each. Also, you could schedule your edge lighting to be on only when, you know, screen is on or off or always, you know, I'm going to have it on always because I love the feature. And coming to the second last one, you'll see that all my apps are following the dark theme, right? Even if I go into settings, you'll see that I have the night mode on. But what I actually have set up is that it goes dark only after a certain time of the day. So during the evening and night when I need the light to be on the lower and a more pleasing side, uh, easy on the eyes, I have the dark theme enabled. And when it's, you know, in the morning or during the day, it follows the regular bright mode. You could also, uh, you know, have it scheduled to sunset and sunrise in your location, but I'm, I'm good with the timing. So just another setting to go through. And the last one is to do with the video enhancer setting. I think it's turned off by default. I don't remember exactly, but if it's off for you, go ahead and turn it on. What it does is that for certain apps that it supports, it'll automatically deliver a much better, brighter, colorful experience when it's really required. So you don't have to go and, you know, change anything. So that's it guys from me. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I would be coming up with more of these things. So stay tuned and thank you for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe.